On October 30, 1961, the Soviet Union detonated a 58 megaton hydrogen bomb at the Novaya Zemlya test site in the north of Russia, right about here. This bomb was the most powerful explosive device ever detonated in the history of mankind. But that wasn't the limit. The Tsar Bomba could reach 100 megatons. That is, it was almost twice as powerful as the bomb from the tests. But for safety reasons, it was decided to reduce its power. The bomb was dropped from a Tu-95 aircraft and then detonated at an altitude of 4,500 meters. The result was staggering even for the scientists who developed the weapon. The nuclear mushroom grew to a height of 64 kilometers and the shockwave went three times around the globe. Moreover, there was interference in radio communications around the world for one hour. Couple of tips on how to get people to do what you want. We know two very cool tricks. The first is to ask people for something that is almost impossible and then lower your demands. For example, you want to ask your buddy for a piece of gum. Walk up to him and ask for three pieces of gum. He will think that it is too much and he won't want to give you three pieces of gum, so he will refuse. But subconsciously, he will feel guilty about it. Then ask for only one. This second request will seem quite acceptable, especially after you asked for three pieces of gum. As a result, you get your gum and your friend is terribly pleased that they will still have two pieces of gum and help their friend. The second trick is to do a favor up front. If someone asks you for help, by all means do it. And when they say thank you, don't say you're welcome. Instead say, of course, it's what friends do for each other. After that, your friend will subconsciously feel that they owe you and will not be able to refuse if you ask for a favor. By the way, going back to the example with the gum, if your friend gave you three pieces of gum straight away, think about it. Perhaps they have already seen our video and are using this technique to make you owe them. So get ready to return the favor. You shouldn't flush the toilet with the lid open. There is something known as toilet plume. It consists of small and invisible particles of waste and toilet water. They can travel up to four meters when you flush and they contain not only dirty water and fecal particles, but also very harmful bacteria. What's more, Scientists conducted an experiment and flushed the toilet in a so-called combined toilet, where the toilet, bathtub, and sink are in the same room. Above the sink, they had toothbrushes in a glass. After only a few days of the experiment, they found fecal particles and lots of bacteria on the surface of the brushes, and we used them to brush our teeth. Ew! That's why you should always close the toilet lid before you flush. Better yet? Put your toothbrushes in a cupboard or special cases. Here's a super cool tip that makes it easy to get cat hair off your couch. Take a regular rubber glove used for cleaning. Put it on and just move it across the surface of the couch. The hair will gather up easily and then you can easily remove it. Chips, of course, are not a healthy food, mainly because they contain trans fats. They are produced when something is fried in vegetable oil. These trans fats not only lead to obesity, but also to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, depression, and various liver diseases. There's also a lot of salt in there, which retains fluid in the body, leading to swelling and gastritis. When instant noodles were invented in Japan, they cost six times as much as regular noodles because they were considered a premium dish. Can you believe it? The main ingredients are flour, eggs, oil, water, and salt. Hmm, sounds pretty safe. In fact, this set of ingredients is much healthier than a lot of the foods we like to eat. Another feature of instant noodles is that they are a great source of energy. They are about 450 calories per 100 grams, about the same as in a smoked sausage. Let's see how Tony is doing. Well, he seems to be all right. By the way, some people eat these noodles without even putting them in the water. In theory, you could do that because they are steamed at the factory, so they are basically cooked. Oh, the battery is dead, but you just charged your phone. Maybe it's the battery. Unfortunately, they do tend to fail pretty quickly. So, to make sure the battery lasts as long as possible, you need to know some rules. Leaving your phone connected when it is fully charged will cause the battery to wear out much faster and last a lot less. So, you should keep your phone's charge between 30 and 90%. It is best to charge your phone a little at a time several times during the day and not let it get below 15%.
Now let's learn to find anyone's fingerprints, or at least take fingerprints from all kinds of surfaces. Take a pencil, take out the lead, and grind it thoroughly into a powder. Now apply this powder to any surface that was touched by another person. Look how clearly you can see the pattern. It can be carefully transferred with tape, and then entered into your spy notebook. Then you can compare the different prints and find a match. Yes, this is a very long and painstaking work, but at least you can find out who comes into your room and touches your stuff while you are away. Watermelon pulp is 90% water. You'd think with that much liquid, the shelves would be bursting with juice boxes. Besides, its pulp is rich in vitamins B1, B2, C, and folic acid. It's like a vitamin cocktail, but it's not all that simple. Nowadays, companies often use dyes and preservatives when making juices to make the product in your glass look pretty and taste good. They tried to deliver watermelon to customers in a more or less natural form, yes, but it turned out not to be economically viable. The fact is that natural watermelon juice must be consumed within four hours of its extraction, which is almost impossible. After just four hours, watermelon juice loses its flavor and it tastes like water. Now imagine you make a batch of top-notch watermelon juice, bottle it up, and distribute it to retail outlets. And then the customer buys your product and drinks what tastes like water with a slight, very distant flavor of watermelon. They'll be furious at your company and they'll think that they have been scammed. And you will be sued for fraud and for being a very bad person. Because you sell water as watermelon juice. On top of that, without a huge amount of preservatives, watermelon juice goes sour quickly. That's why you won't find this kind of juice in stores. Most often, it's combined with melon or grape juice. These experiments allow manufacturers to bring the taste of watermelon to you. And then, as a rule, they also add some artificial watermelon flavor. In this form, it can sit on the store shelf for months and not lose its flavor. Whoa, Tony, did you find some watermelon juice? No way, come on, let me see what you have found there. Well, the name tells you everything right away. Watermelon flavored drinks. That's not juice. What's in it? 62% water. Oh, watermelon juice, but only 30%. Sugar, citric acid, a natural watermelon flavoring, ascorbic acid, something weird called sucralose, and dyes. Basically, there's not much watermelon in this juice. Plus, there are all kinds of chemicals added to keep the drink from going bad. It's no healthier than an energy drink. That's why it's better to consume this fruit in its natural form. That is, buy a watermelon, wash it, slice it, and eat it. Or you can make fresh watermelon juice at home and drink it at once. This way it preserves all its nutritional properties. This drink helps to cleanse your body, removes toxins and impurities, provides highly digestible sugar, and even energizes you. In addition, watermelon juice has a positive effect on the urinary system gets rid of salts and uric acid, and has anti-inflammatory and healing properties. And it also removes excess water from the body, reduces swelling, and improves the metabolism. To begin with, viruses can only be seen with an electron microscope. In comparison, take an ordinary bacterium. The human eye can't see it either, but a virus is 1,000 times smaller. Imagine that! Okay. We already established that there are millions of viruses inside the body. So what are they doing there? Let's see. The virus attaches itself to a certain cell. Each virus has its own favorite type. For example, hepatitis attaches to liver cells and the flu attaches to respiratory cells. Then the virus gets inside the cell and sort of dissolves inside it. It's kind of like when you add salt to water. It dissolves there and all the water becomes salty. It's like that except the virus particles subjugate the cell and make it work for itself to create more versions of itself. After a few hours, instead of one virus, thousands of them are already inside the cell. In doing so, the cell dies and new viruses conquer and destroy more cells. In this way, one virus inside the organism can multiply to several millions or even billions in just one day. And in the process, it gradually kills the organism in which it is located. Come on, Tony, don't be like that. You've only learned half the information, and you've already decided that your life is over and you've been overcome by viruses. It's not like that. 
our bodies are not that easy to defeat. Meet the one and only, the brave and invincible, the immune system. When a virus enters the body and starts destroying cells, the immune system immediately sets off its alarms. Special scouts are sent out to figure out what we are dealing with. But the virus is not stupid either. It hides inside the cells and attempts to deceive the defense in every possible way. However, in the end, it is found. When the enemy is identified, special killer cells are sent out to destroy both the infected cells and the virus itself. By the way, if the body encounters a virus it already knows, it has a special units just for it. These are known as antibodies. The purpose of vaccination is to create this special unit in your body to fight a certain virus, because it is much worse when a new virus or a new strain of a known virus enters the body. By the way, new strains of viruses appear all the time. These buggers are so basic that they don't need much time to change. All kinds of external influences contribute to this. Soil, water, air, chemical compounds, solar radiation, and many other things cause viruses to mutate. For example, the influenza virus originally only affected birds, but it quickly mutated and became dangerous to humans as well. So, when a new virus enters the body, the immune system does not see it at all, so the disease lasts longer and it is very painful. That's when the fever, runny nose, cough, and other symptoms show up. It is a natural defensive reaction. This way the body is trying to destroy and chase away the intruder. We can't recommend you to take any pills, as it is the job of professional doctors. But you can definitely help your immune system by drinking a lot of water. Not only toxins, but also bacteria and viruses are eliminated from the body along with water. Let's recap. There are a lot of viruses present in our body, and a whole bunch more around us. But our immune system is so cool that it fights them non-stop, so most of the time we feel fine. So, the most important rule in staying healthy is to help your immune system. Maintain hygiene, wash your hands, wash any fruits and vegetables thoroughly, air the room, wipe the dust, and keep your house clean overall. The more viruses we wash away, air out, or destroy before they enter the body, the easier it will be for your inner guard. It's also important not to get too cold, stay away from drafts, and dress properly when the weather is cold. Otherwise, your immune system may weaken, then the viruses inside will feel free to multiply. In simple terms, that's what getting sick means. Zombie apocalypse could happen. By the way, in 2017, physics students from the University of Leicester decided to study the possibility of survival in such a scenario. They modeled the spread of a virus on a computer. They set initial parameters, assuming that one zombie could find one person a day and infect them with a 90% probability. Then, the computer calculated that in 100 days after the start of the zombie plague, out of 7.5 billion people, only 273 humans would remain alive. Not 273 million, just 273 normal human beings in our vast planet. But their computer didn't take into account the fact that we have already made three videos that tell in great detail how to survive the zombie apocalypse. After watching them, you will know everything about zombies, you will be able to fight them, and of course, survive. We even compiled them into a playlist to make it easier for you. The link will appear right here on the screen and is already waiting for you in the description under the video. Tell us in the comments what you would do in case of a zombie apocalypse. The best and most unusual ideas will be featured in the next video. Take care of yourself, be happy, and see you in the next episode of Super Tony.